so until I have an AR headset, I got my, my notes in my phone, which is, of course, like one of the biggest problems, right? Like we're looking down at this device instead of up at everybody else. Um, but anyways, hi. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm Sarah Downey. I'm a, a principal at Accomplice, which is an early stage VC firm here in Boston. We used to be called Atlas Venture. We split in half. They do life science. We do tech. Um, so uh, my background is uh, I was a lawyer, didn't want to practice, worked at a couple startups. Now I'm in, investing in specifically in AR and VR. And, um, but one thing that I think qualifies me uh, to talk on this stuff perhaps more than any of that stuff is that I'm, I'm a huge sci-fi and video game person. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of recognition from, from you out here. And I, that's definitely a common thread that I see everywhere. Like we've, we've wanted this stuff to be reality for a long time and now we're at that inflection point where it's actually becoming reality. So I don't know about all of you, but I, I feel really lucky to be alive right now. I think that this is the most exciting time for humanity and, and we're in it. So with this, uh, you know, everyone in this room is here because we believe that AR is going to be big and we're all excited about it. Um, and uh, I wanted to compile a list of some of what I think is most exciting about that. And I did this in a, an, an article for Upload VR where I contribute. I tried to list as many discrete, interesting things by category as I could. Uh, some of these might be, be novel to you and some of them won't, but I think often we encounter people who, who say, I, I don't really get this AR thing, I don't know why it's big. And so I'm trying to give enough use cases that you can go and, and tell those people like, hey, I, I, I heard about this today and this will affect you or your job or your life in some way. And I have to cut this down massively for this talk, but if you want to check out the whole thing, uh, that's the URL. Another big thing is that in venture, we have to predict the future and we are too early sometimes, which is bad because uh, people aren't ready to adopt a product and, and uh, things don't really work out. It's also bad if we're too late because there's too many competitors and things aren't uh, really that exciting once it's been done before. So for each of these uh, use cases, I'm going to talk a little bit about a near-term thing, which might be the next couple of years, and a long-term thing, which might be 10, 15, uh, 20 plus years out. In productivity, one of the most interesting things I think is the shift in uh, UI UX uh, from what we currently do, which is mostly touch and typing, to brain computer interfaces, interfaces to voice, eye tracking, uh, to these uh, new forms of, of gestures and things like you already see in the HoloLens, the, the bloom gestures and the point. Uh, and then long term, Several of the speakers have mentioned this today, but the fact that you can have a high-res display anywhere is going to get rid of screens. It's going to get rid of TVs. It's going to get rid of like these clunky monitors that we plop ourselves in front of. We're going to be able to do this anywhere at any time. I also like the, the idea of uh, using facial uh, recognition and detection to, in real time, scan a person's face, pull up the whole, this whole digital footprint of them, all of your past interactions, what they tweeted, what they're doing on LinkedIn, which is kind of scary from a privacy perspective, but it also an, empowers all of us to kind of have that superpower to be the person that remembers every interaction that you've ever had with anybody and what their kids are doing, what they do, uh, and, and remember you know, why you're going into a meeting and what the context was. In psychology, we have some things that you've already been talked about today, but EQ training, right? AR can allow you to analyze people. Are they interested in what you're saying at that very moment? Are they, are they smiling? Are they happy? What, what's their sentiment? Um, have you been telling a joke for too long? Should you maybe back off? You know, there's special application for the autistic community with, with applications like these. And then long-term, empathy training. AR uh, and VR can put us literally in each other's bodies. So if you, if you want to be in somebody else's shoes, these types of te technologies can, can put you there. And uh, already there's research on, on how impactful this can be for understanding each other. There's a lot in transportation. I think this is one of the easiest things to wrap your head around when it comes to AR because, again, near term, you're taking this phone and looking down, especially when you're driving, which can be dangerous, right? And just simply moving that up in a headset so that you're looking at the road and you're seeing these directions uh, transposed on top of your field of view. So first of all, that's going to be a lot uh, better in terms of safety. And then longer term, 
you're going to have navigation inside of places like malls, which pulled into real-time inventory management could show you, you know, here's all the black leather jackets in this mall, and you can go there. Um, so that's going to be super useful. We've heard a lot about education today, and this, I think, is one of the biggest uh, areas with interesting use cases. But near term, we can look at things like a physical book or even a, a, an e-book and have AR pop-outs. Uh, we can have 3D visualizations of charts. We can have videos. We can define words. Like, you know, the Kindle is already a very early uh, example of this where you can look something up in the dictionary if you don't get it. Uh, but long term, the fact that teachers and educators can create very personalized contact, uh, content that reacts to you, you know, can slow down a course if you're not comprehending, can speed it up for somebody who's quicker, can do real-time quizzes. Very interesting, um, in my opinion. Law enforcement and legal has a lot of implications, some of which, again, are scary from a privacy perspective, but there's always this tension between privacy and liberty, right? Uh, so short term, uh, the ability to scan faces in crowds and be able to uh, search for suspects um, and also using people's phones or in the future people's headsets to sort of do crowdsourced manhunts. And uh, longer term, again, I'm, I'm referencing things that have been brought up today, which today has been amazing in my opinion, so many cool things. But one of those is that uh, AR can detect micro expressions. So all of us, when we're lying, generally we all kind of have these micro expressions that betray us and show that we, we might not be telling the truth. So you can imagine the implications for things like jury selection, where you might want to tell a little fib to get out of that, or negotiation, uh, you would have to be much more straightforward, or even um, trials, you know, if somebody's on the stand, uh, will that be the kind of evidence that we'd be able to use? And uh, crime scene recreation, there's already some work with this in VR, but you can imagine an AR capturing reality at the scene of a crime and then showing that to a prosecutor, to a jury in the future. You know, being able to really put yourself in the shoes uh, of a person at the scene of a crime and gauge, you know, could I actually see a bullet from this, this uh, standpoint? Could I actually identify a person from this far away? Some of my favorite use cases are in accessibility because AR can really give us senses that we don't have and, and uh, give us superpowers to the ones that we do. So some of the short-term applications are things like magnifying text, uh, real-time language translation. Uh, but the longer term for the visually impaired includes applications like translating uh, objects to audio. Like So uh, we were talking in the last, uh, the, the last uh, guy, Samson, was talking about uh, computer vision. So you know, the, the ability for your AR headset or device to pick up all the objects in the world around you and, and give that to a visually impaired person through their um, audio channel is life-changing for those individuals. Or similarly, uh, for, for hearing impaired people, getting like a real-time closed caption feed of what sounds and what things are happening to them. Like, I'm getting on a plane right after this, and you know, when the pilot makes a, an announcement, that's a thing that you know, we kind of take for granted that we can all hear that, but uh, a hearing impaired person with this kind of headset in the future could either see uh, a uh, American uh, Sign Language person, sort of like as an inset box, or just have the closed captioning on the bottom. And you know, there's companies working on both of these things right now. We heard a lot about medical today, so I'll make this one brief, but the ability to get a second pair of eyes, a second opinion on something that a doctor is seeing right then is, is happening today. And then long term, to be able to go in remotely with robotics uh, and, and complete a surgery that really scales somebody who's a specialist in a medical field who might be limited by travel um, in order to make that person more accessible. There's been a lot of developments in AR in the military. Uh, it, it's been one of the, the places with the most innovation in the past, and some of the best technology that we've seen is actually has a history in the military. So today we're already seeing an enhanced pilot heads-up displays to track uh, to better track targets um, for navigation and aim. But then uh, one of my my favorite future applications is 
this comes from the gaming world, but um, to, to do an exaggerated display around friendlies and civilians be, with like a green aura and, and enemies with red to minimize uh, ac accidental casualties. Uh, I, I'm kind of intentionally minimizing shopping and advertising because I think there's, a, there's we, we've all heard a lot about that as applied to AR, but I do think it, it it's interesting in, in the kind of shorter term next couple of years to, to imagine a, a smart grocery store trip with your AR glasses where you know you check things off of a list and maybe you have a, a navigation through the grocery store that shows you the best path to get the items that you need and you hit the you know the freezer last so your things don't melt. And then long term, let's say you uh, walk by somebody on the street and they have a cool pair of shoes, right? Um, this is in development, but to my knowledge doesn't exist yet. You would be able to look at that person kind of flag the item that you're interested in, get the brand, pull up like an e-commerce window and be able to buy that thing right then. Social, on the short term, we're seeing things like Snapchat spectacles, which are, again, changing the point of view uh, of video blogging from de here on this device to outward from your point of view, which is making things more personal, more interesting. One interesting application for AR social layer in the future is like a real life status update. So one application is like you go into a bar and maybe you take a book because you're an introvert like me and you actually want to read in a bar and you don't want to talk to anybody, right? And so you could have a status update that says that. Or if you're, you've had a couple of drinks, you're feeling chatty, you could change your status so everybody would see that you know, you're ready to, to mingle, right? Uh, I've got fitness and sports left, which are related but separate enough that I'm, I'm keeping them separate. Um, fitness, short term, you could imagine custom workouts synced to things like your heart rate, your exertion level, your recovery, um, custom content delivered in things like smart mirrors, which I, I, I've seen, and, and other devices. And uh, longer term, imagine having a holographic personal trainer who shows up right in the middle of your workout space and you can have that person demo perfect squat form or, or what is a burpee? And you can walk around and actually see that happen. Um, so that's gonna be great for your form. Or also uh, things like, like you know how in Mario Kart you can race against your, your ghost of your past uh, time trials? So imagine if you had like a workout ghost where you could see how, how hard you went in the past, uh, the, a past session and try to eclipse that. And then in sports, we hear a lot today in the AR realm around data, uh, sort of like fantasy data, things that are like adding an additional information layer to the sports that we're, we're already watching, like player stats and overlays. But to me, the, the more interesting application of AR is to the players themselves. Um, so I think we hear about performance enhancing drugs today, we're gonna hear more about performance enhancing tech in the future. Like if you're a baseball player and you, you're wearing an AR headset, can you identify a pitch and the type of pitch as it's coming to you? Do you know the velocity? Um, can you expand your field of view or your reaction time? And how will those things uh, be treated in that, in that venue? So uh, in closed, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening right now in AR. I, I, I get to see some amazing cool things, you know, as a VC. I think the top three industries that are most interesting from an invested, investment perspective are social uh, fitness and uh, productivity work. Um, so if you're working on any of those things, give me a, give me a tweet or an email. And um, thank you. This has been a great day so far. Thanks, appreciate it.